What if two of the most intriguing characters in mathematics, zero meets the imaginary unit i, forming the expression zero raised to the power of i? At first, it might seem simple, like nothing special would come out of it. But that's not the case. There's something very interesting in this expression that we're going to explore and visualize in this video. Let's start simple. You might think, isn't zero to any power just zero? Yes, that's true if the exponent is a positive real number. We all agree that if it is less than equal to zero, then it's undefined, which we will explore why. But what about iota then? It's not a real number. And when exponents gets tricky like this, then we use this formula, which is known as exponential form of a power. When we apply this, x to the power i becomes e raised to the power of i natural log of x. Now we can use Euler's formula, which tells us that raising e to an imaginary power gives us a position on a circle using cos and sine. In our case, the angle theta is simply the natural log of x. Now, when we plug zero into the formula directly, we run into a problem, because the natural log of zero isn't defined. In fact, it doesn't exist, so it completely breaks the formula at this point. Let's take a quick look why the natural log of zero is undefined. Natural log of x is simply the answer to the question, what power of e gives me the number x? For natural log of one, the answer is zero, because e to the power of zero is one. So for natural log of zero, we're asking, what power of e gives me zero? And the answer is nothing. No matter what power we use, e will never become zero. Back to the topic. So if instead of evaluating zero to the power of i directly, we explore what happens as a number, let's call it z, gets infinitely close to zero. To do that, we need to bring in limits. But again, there is a problem the limit as z approaches to zero does not exist. Because the answer you get when approaching from the positive side is not the same as the answer you get from the negative side. Let's take a deeper look and start with the first path, approaching zero from the positive side. As x gets smaller and smaller, the natural log of x drops lower and lower and heads toward negative infinity. That means our expression becomes e raised to the power of i times negative infinity, and we know that when the angle gets extremely large in the negative direction, the cos and the sine don't settle on one value. They keep looping and oscillating forever around the unit circle. You might be wondering, why does on a unit circle? When we take the modulus of x power i as x approaches zero from the right, and we look at it through the polar form of complex numbers, the answer becomes clear. The polar form describes any complex number as a point with a length, called the magnitude, and a direction, which is the angle. So regardless of the angle or phase, the magnitude always stays one. That's because multiplying by a complex exponential doesn't change the size. It only affects the direction. Now it's time to see this in action. On the left, we have our number x approaching zero along the positive real axis. On the right, we're plotting x power i on the complex plane. Watch that as x gets smaller and smaller, x power i starts spinning around the unit circle. It never settles, it never stops, it just keeps oscillating infinitely around the circle. Moving forward now, let's see what happens if we approach zero from the other direction, meaning as x approaches zero from the negative side. This is an interesting point and I want your full attention here. Remember earlier I mentioned that the limit of x raised to the power i doesn't exist in general. The reason is that the standard natural logarithm is not defined for negative numbers on the real line. To make sense of it, we turn to the complex logarithm, which gives us a more complete picture. So let's substitute this richer definition into our expression and break this down a bit further to make the structure of our answer much clearer. Also for any negative number on the real axis, its angle or argument is pi. We also have a term 2 pi n, where n can be any integer. This means the expression has infinitely many possible values, each corresponding to a different branch. So unless we choose a specific branch, for example, the principal branch by setting n equals zero, the result stays multi-valued and doesn't give us one final answer. If we just stick to the principal branch, we find our familiar oscillating term, the one we saw before when x was positive, but now it's multiplied by a completely new term e raised to the negative pi, 
And that changes everything, meaning that we're still oscillating, but now with a radius of tiny number, about 0 0.043. Let's see this in action through visualization. On the left, you'll see x approaching 0 from the negative side. And on the right, watch carefully. For comparison, here's the unit circle from our earlier case when x was positive. But now, x to the power i is trapped inside a much smaller circle. It's still oscillating. But this time, it's confined to a tiny space, much closer to the center of the complex plane. Moving to our final verdict. First, we must conclude that the expression is formally undefined, because the natural log of zero is undefined. But the story does not end here. We've shown that different paths of approach give wildly different results. Approaching from the positive side causes an endless oscillation on the unit circle, meaning the limit does not exist. Approaching from the negative side requires the complex logarithm, introducing an extra factor of e to the power negative pi and revealing infinite branches of possible answers. Ultimately, this path dependence is what makes zero to the power of i fascinating and truly undefined. It shows that in mathematics, sometimes the journey and the reasons why a single answer can't exist are far more beautiful than the answer itself. Subscribe for more videos like this.